Welcome to the Coon Hunting University podcast, where we'll discuss all things coon hounds, from competition hunting to pleasure hunting with family and friends. I'm your host, Alan Bridges, and we'll take an in-depth look at our hounds from the whelping box to the winter circle and all the stops in between. So grab your notebooks and your pencils because class is in session. Coon Hunting University is brought to you by Conkeys Outdoors, hunting and hound supply store. Find out more at conkeysoutdoors.com and Superior Hunting Lights. Superior, step up to the max. Use discount code CHU Podcast at checkout and receive 5% off on nighthunters.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest on today. We're going to do this at the Peach Classic in Comer, Georgia. I've got Katie Millwood here today. Katie, if you're not familiar with her, she's probably done as much or more than any woman in the sport of coon hunting. She's been to the world finals four or five times, and honestly, I don't know if anybody else has done that. So without any further ado, Katie, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great. Um, So tell us your story. When did you get started? How did you get from where you started to where you are today? I got started when I was 13 years old. My brother had coon hounds, and he was big in the black and tans, and my cousin and everybody used to hunt. So we started there. I'd go with them a little bit here and there. Finally decided to get my own dog. In the meantime, as I was trying to find a dog, they all quit. So I was left alone. (laughs) Um, A good friend of ours named W.L. Scroggs, most of them probably know him around Monroe, Georgia. He had a little female that he brought over and gave it to me for my 13th birthday. I took that female and made her a grand night champion. We won eight out of 12 casts. Her name was Hard Knockin' Honey, Wallace Gillespie, and Hayward Ivy, and all them just hunting with her. From that point, I just kind of stayed with it. It's just what I enjoy doing it, and I'll be 33 years old this year. And Well, I wasn't going to ask you how old you were. That <laughs> that's okay. That's, that's fine. <laughs> um, but we've been around the world, and one thing's led to another, and just enjoy doing it. Good. So... You know, about your dogs, you breed dogs too, right? I do. Okay. What are, what have been some of the bloodlines that you use? And I'm, I'm not up to date on the Walker breed. Yeah. Um, so the female that I started with, Honey, she was straight off a hard knocking stylish haze and we crossed her back with Crow and Grant's cutter. And I don't know, never kept up much with those puppies. I was 14 years old, so they just kind of went around as I got older, the next dog I started with was Rebel, Stylish Rebel. We won a bunch of PKC hunts with him, finished him the grand night. And he was straight off a of Babe Stylish Banjo. Um, we only raised one litter of him because at that point, you know, still being young, I was hunting, didn't care much about the breeding. Not until probably when I got Trump is when I really, really got into breeding. He's straight off of Big D and Halftime Ruby. And, you know, Ruby's the top one in his female in PKC. Mm-hmm. And his oldest pups are 16 months old now, and they're starting to win in hunts. And every one of them's been just naturals. That's just been a bloodline that I followed. Sure. So going back, not only do you hunt, but you show dogs too. I do. You've had a little bit of success with that. Yes, I have. I have. Um, so expound. So the showing showing portion kind of came from my cousin, the same people that got me into the coon hunting along with my brother. She had a blue tick female, prettiest dog I've ever seen. We went to Auto Mose in 2004, may have been 2003, and um, I was terrified to show. And this was a grand champion blue tick female, and it's back when Amanda Alexander and everybody like that was showing. Well, they had the kids show, and it, it, me just being the person I am, just didn't know anything about it. But she put me out there with that female, and I fell in love with it. Probably six months later, I bought my first ever show doll from Leslie Brooks. Her name was Swamp Bottom's Little Miss Sunshine. We went, bought her in September, took her to Albany, Georgia, Winter Classic in 05, and won Senior Class Walker Female, and that started it there. Um, Amanda Carmack ended up owning her in 
I think she's in Indiana, um, but she was, I mean, of course, she's already passed away by now because Sunshine would have been 17 years old. Sure. Um, then I started just piddling around with some different ones up until I got Rocky. Um, that was my, he taught me a lot. He taught me more about so showing. what was Rocky's full name? Um, Tree Blazing Sea Rock City. He was straight off of Lisa Hunziker's. Come into your city, dog. World show champion in AKC, UKC, and PKC. We won Walker Days with him. We won Cuts at the World. You know, we've won a Grand American, and we just lost him this past September. And that was, mm -hmm. he's 10 years old, and that was a tough, tough one to lose. It still gets me. In the meantime, I acquired Ringo, co on with Steve Randolph, and we've, We've won a ton with him, too. Um, you won a big show last year? Yeah, we won the Walker, Tree and Walking part of the World Championship with him. And just last last weekend, we, or two weeks ago, we won Walker Days, Grand Champion Mail with him. That's the Southeastern Tree and Walker Days. That's Southeastern Tree and Walker Days. And also last year, we won the overall Walker Days, the big Walker Days up in Indiana with him. Um, I now have a little blue tick female that I... A lot of people don't know about, but she's they're going to know now. She's going to know now. She's she's been pictured. Um, she's won several big shows, but we're probably going to break her out more in September and get her ready. All right. Well, who are who have been some of your major influences? Hunt and show or both. 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 I got an idea of one of them. Yeah. Um, from the first show that I ever stepped foot in was in Georgia State. And I can't even remember the year, honestly, but it was in Greensboro, Georgia. And John Sedgenak came up to me. He was he was showing a female called Hard Harder Brick House. <laughs> and I, I remember looking at her and just thinking that was the baddest female I've ever seen. And he beat me. He beat me straight up. And he come to me and he's like, this is what you did wrong. And just from that day forward, struck up a friendship. I always tell John he's my favorite Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, but he's took me under his wing and he's shown me exactly where to go um and then we started hunting together and you know we've co on dogs together and he's been like a dad to me good so he's, good he's probably one of my major influences yep he's a he's a good one for sure and i'm probably going to get him after we're done he should <laughs> um <laughs> but uh so on more of the on the hunting part what are some of the things that you've accomplished I mean because you know, there are not many ladies out there that yeah. have done what you've done and like you said I'm not harping on age here but you're only 33 yeah so it's first hunt that I was ever in was with my honey female and it was a PKC hunt it was on a Tuesday night and I'll never forget it was out of Watkinsville and I drew I can't remember who I drew first round but I come back on a Tuesday night. I had school the next morning, and um, Stacy Wooten was there. And uh, he said, let's hunt it off. 13 years old, I said, let's go for it. And uh, Brian Gilly was a non-hunt judge, and my little female went in there and treated a coon, and Stacy's dog never made a bark, and so I, I won that cast. And that started a whole new friendship all the way around there. Um, a lot of people look at you now and say, look what you did, you know, because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know, you know. Um, I stayed with it. I've made mistakes, and I've, you know, been there. But as far as, oh, gosh, I don't even know a win list to tell you. Um, I mean, I've been well, you very fortunate me. and lucky to do all the winning I have. We made it to the World Finals four four years in a row. Um, not in a row, but four years in my mm -hmm. lifetime. I've been qualified, knock on wood, probably every year that I've ever entered a dog into an RQE. Never made it through the zones every year, but just to even qualify one was huge. Yeah. Super bad, the old super bad dog we had, me and John. We took him to the World Finals two years in a row, and him at nine and ten years old. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that's consistency, just with an old dog like that. And then we got in with Valley Creek Faith in 2011, right. another one me and John had together. And then in 2020, I got in the World Finals with the Trump dog. And that's still a heartbreaker on my end because I costed him the top 20. Oh, well, you know, it <laughs> but, happens. You know, 
I had a little blue tick female. I won the overall Hall of Fame Georgia State show and hunt in the same weekend with her, and that to me that was huge. Mm-hmm. Um, we finished fifth in the state race PKC last year with a dog that we have, and we've got one in the top ten right now. So it's we've been very fortunate to just keep plugging along, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, you've done you've done very very well, I guess. Conkeys Outdoors knows that keeping up with the latest in hunting technology can be expensive. That's why they are proud to offer amazing financing options. From 30 days, same as cash, to 0% interest for 6, 9, 12, and even 18 months, depending on your credit score and the amount you spend. If you've been eyeballing that new thermal or want to upgrade to the latest in tracking system technology, go find out more on the web at conkeysoutdoors.com, or if you're in the Hastings, Florida area, stop by and visit They'd love to have you. Conkey's Outdoors. Houndsman. Helping houndsman. You're, you're mainly a, a, a walker person. I am. I am. But you've had a bunch of different ones. Oh, yeah. What are some of the other dogs that are not walker dogs that, that you've done some winning with? Starting way back, the first one that I could pop into my mind is going to be Oconee River Lisa. She was an English dog. Um, she was she was tough. She was dead silent on the ground, but she would tree you plenty of coons. Yeah. I can't say that I've ever handled a black and tan that I can remember, but I had the blue tick candy. Mm. And then one of your very own Nelly dogs. She's probably still one of the funnest I've ever hunted. <laughs> she can be fun, but she can be a headache too. <laughs> she just likes me better. <laughs> yeah, she does. You broke my dog. So, but I really enjoyed having her at the end of my leash. What's the mood or the, the feeling that you get when most of the time you're the only lady out there? You may be at a hunt with 30 or 40 dogs or 50 dogs and and you're the only female that's entered in the hunt i mean is that in, has that ever intimidated you or it hasn't um i've been asked that before and i guess because it's just something i've always loved to do and i just honestly feel like one of the guys is there you know i <laughs> just different um i enjoy it and i've always done it my whole life and unfortunately this is a sport that's mostly men so have have you been able to attract more women to the sport? Um, I think so. I really, I really think so. I, in the last several years, I've seen more and more coming out to hunt. I've had several contact me just to go hunt with me, so they're not alone, and they have other women to go with. Mm-hmm. And so, to me, that's a big influence. I feel like that I can influence them to do. One more thing. On, on your list of accomplishments that we kind of glanced over, I think. You were inducted into the Georgia Federation of Coon Hunters Hall of Fame. I was. Um, when, was when, did you, when did that happen? That was in 2020. Um, that was an unexpected, huge accomplishment. I had no idea. And still to this day, it just tickles me to death. <laughs> so you might be one of the youngest people ever in Inducted into it, and the only woman, and the only one. Oh well, I think there's some other ladies first that woman. you were the first one, yeah. but I'm pretty certain you'd be the only hunter. Yeah, to be inducted into it. I mean, that's that's pretty <laughs> pretty stout. That I will probably say is my most knowledgeable thing that I'm proud of. Um, just being my age, and you know all the accomplishments I have done, but. To actually be inducted into the Hall of Fame is huge. And well, the cool, coolest part about it for me is, you know, walk up to you, talk to you. <laughs> You'd never guess that that Katie Millwood's in the Hall of Fame. You, you know, you, you don't you don't carry yourself that way. You like you said, you're you're one of the guys. Yeah, I'm just and down to earth and try yeah, to stay stay like yeah, that with you're everybody. Just, you're pretty humble, but I know one thing: when you draw out with you on the cast, you better you better be ready. <laughs> because because you're definitely prepared. I do see a lot of that still to this day if people don't know me, um, especially if I travel off in different states. They will they will just look at me like I don't know have any clue what I'm doing. 
And then by the end of the cast, everybody's just like, wow, I was not expecting that from you. I do feel a lot like 90% of these hunts I go to, I get stuck judging. And so when people call my name to judge, all eyes are on me. They're like, why does she get the card? You know, <laughs> so that's because you know your business. I do. I do. And, but it's just funny to see people's reactions like that. That it, you're right. It is, <laughs> it is, um, you know, um, well, we've known each other a long time and we're friends. And so I, I may not get, you may not get that reaction from me. I'm just about to draw out with Katie Millwood. I'm going to scratch my head going, dang it. Be on your game. <laughs> <laughs> dang it. <laughs> but so what you had, you had some dogs get inducted into the hall of fame too. Which, which ones yeah. were they? Uh, we had grand night champion Valley Creek faith. And then we've had super bad get inducted into the hall of fame. And he was, he was a dual grand baby states winner. Cool. Um, so, what are your plans for, you know, the future as far as, you know, you're going to hunt more big hunts, you're going to hunt local hunts? I try to support all the way around. Um, if I if I have a big hunt, I'm going to be at it. If I have a local hunt, I'm going to try my best to be at it. I can honestly say that I'm not biased and I'll, it doesn't matter if it's a two-hour local club or 20 minutes away. I'm going to try to be there and support it just because it's it's really my passion. And I'm going to hunt and show. So we're at the Peach Classic this weekend. You've won this, had not you? I have placed in it. I've won the show last year, mm-hmm. but I have never won the actual hunt part. I did win Queen of Hunt, but I've never gotten over all. Okay. It's my goal. I'm going to get it one year. <laughs> I, I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. You know, you've got a family. You've got, I see your big lug of a husband sitting back over there. You want to hear how we met? Well, that's That'd story. be awesome. <laughs> it's it's so funny. It really is. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Katie's married to John Millwood. So, I, I'll just throw that out there. He's about <laughs> six foot eight and weighs about 375 pounds and He's like a big old lumberjack. So I'm just kidding about, I don't know if he weighs 375 pounds. He calls me around. Not, but he's a big dude. Anyway, super nice guy, but you probably don't want to cross him. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, how did you and John meet? So I had a the back to the old rebel dog that you heard me talk about a mm-hmm. few minutes ago. I had him, and that was my pride and joy. We were just winning everything. Um, he had an old dog that he bought named the Tree Daddy. I remember that dog. <laughs> and everybody knows Tree Daddy's reputation, just the way he was. Well, we went down to, um, didn't even know him. I don't know anybody. He was a friend of a friend. And we went down to a $500 added purse PKC hunt in Rail, Georgia. And um, we drew out together, and I was judging the cast. And I wasn't but about 16 at the time, so I was I was pretty cocky, you know. Um, and we cut loose, and I took a first strike, and Daddy took second strike, and Rebel went about 300 yards, locked down tree, and I had first tree, and Daddy come in there. And if anybody's ever heard with Daddy, you don't you don't move Daddy, you know. And Rebel, Rebel would stand his ground, but he liked to jack the tree a little bit, and you know that can cause issues too. Well. We heard some yeah, yeah, and going on, and we get in there, and um, they're locked up fighting. I was mad. I, was, I had to scratch both of them, and me judging over a possum on top of that. Oh, <laughs> the curse of the Walker dog. A possum on top of that. I'll tell the whole story. Um, I said a few choice words to John and told him that he shouldn't have never hold that piece of crap down here and that he was a piece of crap for even considering that dog, and... And cussed him all the way back to the truck, honestly. And he kept coming up to my truck and was signing the scorecard, apologizing, and I, I rolled the window up in his face. <laughs> Little did I know, um, a friend of a friend just kept pushing it out for a couple months. I was like, nope, nope. That was in June. That was in June of 05. No, 06. It was 06. And, um, we finally started talking and we started dating in November or November of 06. We were engaged in April of 07 and married in August of 07. <laughs> that quick. So you've been married? August will be 15 years. 
All because of a dog fight. A dog fight. Who would have thought it? <laughs> At a coon hunt. <laughs> as much as I've talked to John, he's never told me that story. He's he's embarrassed of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But he has been a supporter. I mean, we've got two kids, and he will watch kids, and he's kind of, he likes to deer hunt, and I do the coon hunting, and he kind of just follows me around and drives me around i'll sleep headed to a hunt and sleep on the way home and he'll sit in the truck and make sure the dogs are safe while i'm out there yeah. hunting so yeah are you in the market for a new dog box and just don't know which one to get that's where i encourage you to go check out gnr cedar dog boxes especially if you're wanting something different GNR Sear Dog Box was established in 2016 when two avid hunters wanted a dog box that was affordable and great looking at that. They provide a high quality, handmade, lightweight box to the customers. They take pride in the fact that their boxes are fully cedar, which will last a lifetime in all types of weather conditions. Cedar also ensures your hounds stay a little warmer in the winter and cooler in the summer. You can find out more about GNR Sear Dog Boxes on Facebook. G- find them at GNR Cedar Dog Boxes. Or give them a call at 615-962-5266. They're located in Lawrenceburg, Tennessee, USA. It's, it, it's teamwork. It is teamwork, for sure. For sure. Most people say, I wouldn't do that. And I'm like, I, it works for some people, I do, guess. Do your kids like to hunt? They do. Um, Jalen, our oldest one, she's 13 now. And she, she will go every night that I go. She loves it. Ashlyn, the youngest one is seven. She's more prissy, and she'll play with the dogs, but she, she likes to show. Um, we've been fortunate with both of them winning the Georgia State shows. Um, she has not hunted in a hunt, but both of the kids have won the Georgia State Championship in the shows at different years. Cool. So that's Ashlyn, the youngest one, just won in October the overall Southeastern Tree and Walker Championship. So... It's nice to be able to look back and see them be successful already too. Yeah, they're there. So did did someone in your family hunt before you and introduce you to it or was it just friends? My brother. Your brother um, did. My oh, brother that's right. Did. You said yeah. that at the yeah. beginning. And my cousin and they just kinda all my cousins all got ran over, so you know, he, he lost a hard hard one there and he just all quit and I scrambled and found found the dog and just stayed with it um one of the hardest lessons I ever learned was from my brother um he had to get up and go to work the next morning and I had to go to school when I first started I didn't have a tracking system you know we had beep beeps eventually Mm -hmm. but I didn't have a tracking system and I remember honey getting in a big swamp behind the house and winder Mm. I couldn't get to her no way around couldn't find a way to her and it was only about 4 30 in the morning I had to get ready for school and so I went home and my brother was getting ready to go to work and he said you feed her feed your dog before you put her up and I said no and he said well why he said, you don't eat breakfast, so you feed that dog. And I, my brother's name was James. I said, because I can't get to her, she's treed in the back of that swamp. He, he kept me from school. Uh, my mom was already going to work, and he said, you're not going to school until you go get that dog off the tree. And he made me, he went with me, but he made me physically walk in there and get that dog off the tree, and he taught me then, you never leave a dog in the woods. Still to this day, I've never left a dog in the woods because that's always been in the back of my mind. Um, yep. And I just remember he would tell me, you feed them dogs before you eat, in the mornings and at night. And that's something that has stayed with me, too. My dogs eat twice a day before I even eat. Awesome. So that's the, that's 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 a good story. Um, <laughs> Thank you. You know, uh, you're also a bench show judge. Mm-hmm. So, what uh, what are some of the bigger shows that you've judged? I hadn't really done a whole lot of bigger shows that I wish I had because. I've been participating. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of local shows. I've had a bunch of people apprentice under me. Um, But I had the opportunity to judge the Peach Classic tomorrow, and Mm -hmm. I'm so super excited. So that tomorrow is going to be Saturday, March the 12th. Yes. Yep. So when it 
What made you want to become a bench show judge? Just learning more about the conformation of dogs and how they're built. Um, I can see, you know, just over time what I feel like they are, but you could stand back and look all day long, but until you have your hands on that dog, there's a lot of things that you don't know is there. Mm -hmm. um, bone structure, your muscle, you know, there's a lot of things that, and it's just nice to be on the other end. Mm -hmm. I know every time that you're at a dog show and I'm at a dog show, <laughs> I happily relinquish my handling duties to you because you make, <laughs> you make my dogs do things in two minutes that it, that I can't make them do in two months. There's a lot of little tips and tricks there that you pick up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, I mean, I, I know, and 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 when when my dogs are on the bench and you're handling, they typically win. And so <laughs> I don't know if it's, it, it, you know, it's it's going to be it's a it's a me not you thing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those um, you've you've. Every time that I see you at a dog show and you put a dog on the bench, I sit back and look. And, you know, I may not like the way that dog is colored, mm -hmm. but if you sit back and look at that dog, there's a reason you put him up there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm not colorblind in any means. Um, I'll show. I'll hunt anything. If I'm going to hunt it, it's going to treat a and it's going to do it right. If I'm going to show it, I don't care what color it is, but it's going to be built right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's, you know, um, do you follow that kind of philosophy with breeding your dogs? I do. I do. Very much so. Um, Rocky, Rocky was one of my show dogs and the first one that I started with. And there was, there was things that I seen that he had faults on and that I knew that if I went and bred to a different show dog once or not, that I may not get that back in. So he was bred to a straight hunting dog. And I still, to this day, like to cross my show dogs with hunting dogs because it puts the drive back into them. It puts the angulation and the shoulder back into them that they need. Yeah, I'm a friend of mine in, a, in the cattle industry. He's got a, a slogan for his farm, and I told one of my coon hunting buddies that slogan and because he didn't. He that guy told me, he says, you know, I really don't care if they got good feed or not or anything like that. And I was like, dude, form follows function. It does. It does. So it's, it's pretty important for our hunting dogs, in my opinion, uh, to be to be correct in Absolutely. their confirmation. You know I mean? Absolutely, 100%. Um, they need those cat-like feet. They need a good, strong forearm and a nice shoulder. They need that rear angulation to push them through the woods. I want something that, if I want to put it on the bench, it's going to stand there all day, and if I want to hunt it, it's going to hunt all night. <laughs> there you go. I mean, that is that is the definition of dual purpose. I try my best to hunt what I show and show what I hunt. Yep. To have that dual purpose hound. Yeah, so do you prefer to go out and buy your own, buy your dogs, or do you prefer to breed your own? I know you've probably done a little of both. I've done a little of both. Um, up until we brought Trump in, in 2019 is when we bought him. Um, and well, the only reason we bought him is because everything at that point we had was we couldn't breed. It was mm -hmm. related because we just kept that line for so long. And we kept puppies off of this female that we raised. And we had her mama and her daddy, you know, and we had four generations of them. Um, actually, one of the dogs that's going to be hunting tonight is off of my sport dog, which is a fourth generation that I own. And she's a night champion with six wins to grand. She made it to the world final. She's qualified for tournament of champions. So standing back and being the breeder of that dog and knowing that she's here tonight. And knowing what's behind them. That, exactly. That's it be, tickles me to death. <laughs> so I'm saying, it's got to be extremely satisfying. It is for sure. For sure. Um, and Trump, when we brought him in, we bred him to our personal female. We've bred him to a couple outside females. And his oldest pups are 16 months old, and they're already starting to win. Uh, and they're just they're natural. So being able to see that starting is a blessing to me. So now we, we've talked with Katie, and so we brought in her husband, John, to kind of give a, a little bit of color background to some of the stuff that she has been telling us. So, John, Katie's, if not the youngest person, definitely the youngest woman ever inducted the Georgia Hall of Fame, Coon Hunting Hall of Fame. Uh, you've had two dogs inducted in there. And she tells me that you met at a tree during a dog fight 
when y'all were teenagers. Absolutely true. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, what's it what's it like being, you know, you're a coon hunter too. Um, maybe not to the extent Katie is, and maybe you don't have the same amount of passion Katie does. But but you're a coon hunter too. You've been doing it a long time. Um, what's it like being married to someone like Katie with? with uh no i'm in all serious seriousness uh you know seeing her do what she does and having the success that she's had well i'll be honest I, I, i'm proud of her um katie and i've been married nearly 15 years and, and i've tried to make it a point to push her success to to the top that's what she loves to do uh, i like to deer hunt i like to coon hunt i got a lot of hobbies and and so that's really what she likes to do and i'm not gonna stand in her way you know with with me trying to step on her toes or anything like that trying to you know compete over the same hobby and so i've let, i've kind of pushed her success to the front and, and and supported her in everything that she's wanted to do when it comes to coon hunting um you know we've got two kids and i know a lot of people who've had to get out of the sport when they have young kids you know and and so on and so forth but we've kind of made it a family affair and I've sat in the car and babysitted while she's hunted, while she showed, you know, we, we take family vacations across the country to the coon hunts and, you know, we've kind of built our life around the sport. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I'm, you know, every time I, you know, turn around, I see a picture on Facebook, y'all taking selfies in the truck, headed down the road. We're going to Kentucky or we're going to Indiana or we're, you know, I've been in a lot of wind pictures over the years, but I'm, I'm the tail holder. Yeah. I'm the dedicated telephone. Yeah, well, you know. Great you know, sometimes it's just good to get your picture taken no matter how you got there. That's right. <laughs> but you know, we, we've been talking about Trump. What's, what's your take on him? Oh, boy. I, I, I've had better dogs. Um, I really like the dog. As far as competition hunting goes, he's tough to beat. Um, you know, people measure coon hounds and coon dogs, you know, by different measures. And he's the type of dog, you know, for a lot of years, we hunted dogs that were probably a little bit more tree minded and, and, um, had good success with those type of dogs. And when we, when we, we bought Trump, we'd been looking for a while and, um, he wasn't exactly my definition of a good looking dog at the time. I, I do like white open dogs, but. He was a little bit ugly, and uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. The first time I saw him, I'm, I agree with you. I did not like the way he was colored at all. And then the first time I saw him on the show bench, I was like, "Dang!" <laughs> he changed. He changed a lot for me when when Katie set him up. He hadn't been handled. Katie spends a lot of time with her dogs, and and she handles them and pets them and loves on them and and makes friends with them and. And I don't think he had a lot of that attention before we got him. And, and so one of the things that I had uh, least patience with was uh, a lot of the manners that he had when we got him. But she's got that worked out with him, and, and he is a A1, 100% to the definition, competition-style dog. Uh, he, he does he likes to trail a little bit more than the dogs that I like, but, but he doesn't. It doesn't pull a lot of blank trees. I mean, they all make mistakes at times. That was one thing that I had to get used to because I was used to dogs that would hot dog, hot nose, or run through the woods, and you know, and, and they would be struck and treated a lot of times before the other dogs would open and, and could get to work in the track with it. And uh, I, I, I had to reteach my patience. He stay on the ground a lot, and, and he would treat coons that other dogs didn't even know was around. And, and probably the dogs that I'd had in the past probably couldn't have treated those coons. And so I had to, um, I learned a lot from him and he's learned a lot from me. Awesome. Awesome. I, I, I've been out and I've been on the cast with him and, and I can say his leash holder knows what he's doing and when he's doing it. And, you know, Katie, Katie can, she, she has no problem putting that dog on the paper. Absolutely not. <laughs> But that's the way it is. You know, if you go to a hunt, you can't win them all. And if you go to a hunt, that's not the time to be training your dog. The time to be training your dog is between hunts. And if the dog barks, he's going to get struck on the paper. If he barks tree, he's going to get treed. And if the dog don't stay, or if he leaves his track, that's the dog's mistake. That's not the English mistake. That's right. 
That's right. Well, you know, that was a good take. Uh, so let's get a little bit about your side of, of how you met. I got Katie's account. And then let, now let's get John's. <laughs> she had the meanest dog. Ever, but... <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just kidding. So when I've probably not been coon hunting quite as long as Katie. I think I bought my first coon hound in 2002. Uh, it was just a gray dog, a red bone. And um, I was hunting with some people around the house, and, and my dog, it wasn't as good as what everybody else had, you know. And I asked some buddies that I was hunting with, I said, what kind of dog do I need to get, you know, so, so I could really compete? And uh, they said, oh, well, you need to get a walker dog. That's what everybody's got, you know, that wins. And we were just kids, you know. So I found me a, a walker puppy out of a dog called Tree Daddy uh, that Wayne Murphy owned in Alto, Georgia. And uh, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And I got that dog around the tree and when, I don't know, he was like five and a half or six months old. Of course, we were hunting on feeder buckets. And um, that really turned me on to the walker dogs. Well, fast forward a couple of years, and I had the opportunity to buy Tree Daddy from Wayne Murphy. And uh, I thought it was the greatest thing. The dog, you know, when you're young, you look in the books, and you, you know, that's, what it, that's where everybody dreams of being, you know, when you're young. And I had the opportunity to buy the dog, and uh, he'd been he'd been bred. I don't know how many puppies he had on the ground, maybe near 100 puppies or whatever, so he'd been bred a good bit. And um, I didn't have any idea that what that does to a male dog, you know, over the over the course of, of taking them out of the hunts and, and isolating them from other dogs, you know, and breeding them. And so... I just pulled him. I, I'd, I'd got him fresh a couple weeks before that, and I'd been hunting him hard. And, and I just pulled him out. I stuck him in a, a cast with some other male dogs in there, and, and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the dogs got in there. You know, they got treated. And at my case, dog, we we had uh, they ended up on the same tree together, and it just didn't. I guess it didn't wind up as, as good as what we would hope. And I will say this too. Not only did they wind up on the same tree and in a dog fight, but they were fighting over a possum. That's what Katie said. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, that's that was uh, over 15 years ago, and look what it's brought. One possum. One possum. Yep. <laughs> yep. So that's, you know, that's a, that's a funny story. I mean, but it's, it's, it's funny how things like that work out. Um, so, is, you know, anything else y'all want to, Add or you know this is this is your stage you you know anything you want to say? No, I mean I mean we we've had a good time. I mean it's going on twenty years of coon hunting career, you know. And when you first start out, you hear about some anybody doing something for twenty years, they're a veteran in it, you know. But I'd like to think I'm not that old. I and know, so, right? <laughs> I, and, and I don't know everything. I, I do try to help the younger people along, you know, and Facebook has opened up a lot of opportunities that we didn't have when I got started, you know, to get help from other people. And, you know, the downside to that is as well is when somebody asks a question, you get three right answers and 20 wrong ones. Yeah, and the calls come out. Yeah, it, it does. And, and you know, that's, that's kind of changed the game a little bit. But it's... Um, but we, we try to help people along. I love to see young people getting involved with the sport, you know, in the dog shows and so on and so forth. And with with my girls uh, growing up around coon hunting, I like to keep them involved. And, and I'm real eager to help other people's kids get started in it as well. Uh, you know, I think we've pretty well shined this tree. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, thank you for, for doing this. And, and uh, you, you know, we'll, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just excited that you did it. It was, you know, as, as far as the Coon Hunt University podcast goes, this one's going to be kind of unique. Um, you know, I got the, I got the one woman in the sport that's probably one of the winningest coon hunters around. That's not a dude. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be your friends and, and uh, thank you. And, you know, I look forward to hanging out in the future. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. We are proud to have Conkey's Outdoors as a sponsor of CHU Podcast. Conkey's is your complete 
hunting, and hound supply store. They carry brands like Garmin, Daltra, Dan's, and even Summit Tree Stands, and much, much more. Whether you're in the market for a new thermal or a new hunting rifle, Conkey's has it all. They even offer financing options. Being a family-run business with customer service that's second to none, it's no wonder why Conkey's is the best in the business. So go check them out at conkeysoutdoors.com or find them on Facebook at Conkey's Outdoors. I really hope y'all enjoyed that interview as much as I did. If you like what you heard here, go on over to Facebook. Give us a like, at Coon Hunting U. Also, go to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a rating and a review. It really helps us out. And remember, if you need a new hunting light, do not overlook Superior. They make an awesome light, best customer service in the business. Man, their walking light and double red is the brightest I've ever seen. Use coupon code CHU Podcast at checkout at nighthunters.com. You can find the link in the description box below this. Coon Hunting University is a product of Audio Hound Productions. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful day.